All right, yeah, I'm here with uh, Dave Mariani, founder of AtScale, and Stein, the man, uh, <laughs> co-founder of Colibra, with me uh, at the Data and Analytics Summit uh, Gartner 2023 in London. Uh, super excited to chat with both of them, hear more about the founder story, learn more about data and analytics, uh, semantic layer, and much more. Uh, why not start with your introduction, Dave? Maybe you can do this. Well, I am Dave Mariani. I'm the co-founder and uh, CTO of AtScale. Um, uh, thanks for having me over, Robert. Nice to meet you, Dave. Uh, Stan Christians from Colibra, one of the co-founders of the company, now 15 years ago. And uh, I've had a lot of roles over those years. Yep. But in the last couple of years, I'm what we call our chief data citizen, mm -hmm. which is the equivalent of saying chief data officer. Nice. So I'm responsible for Calibra's data strategy, our data products, and our data infrastructure. Right. Thank you. Uh, very cool data citizen, right? Data citizen officer. Uh, the chief data citizen. So Chief data citizen. Yeah, yeah I know it's a bit of a thing. Yeah. Uh, but essentially, we like to think that uh, everyone who uses data to do their job, nice. we nice. call that a data citizen. And in companies and organizations today, that's nearly everyone. Okay. And I'm like their chief mascot data citizen. Okay, very cool. Thanks yeah. for sharing that. Thanks. Um, uh, to start with, obviously, I know you both might have some founder story when you kind of sta started years back. Dave, you started almost 10 years back in somewhere close to that time for you as well, Stan. Would you like to share something with our audience today? Maybe Stan, you can go first, yeah. So you're asking uh, about an origin story or yes. something? Whew. Well, we got to go all the way back to 2008. That's when we started. So funny yeah. thing is that we actually get, got started um, in the financial crisis. It was a very different time from uh, today. They only got more important. Um, and what's an interesting origin story? So uh, we started the company with about four-ish founders, a little bit more, five. Uh, and we are actually a spin-off from a university in Brussels. And, you know, to come to the topic of this podcast, right, the semantic layer, we are actually a spin-off from a semantics technology lab yeah. back in that day. So happy to talk about it. Yeah, so similar to Stan, uh, five total founders started in 2013. So, uh, so not, a, not a, it hasn't been around for about 10 years now. Uh, so not as long as Calibra. Uh, so the origin story really for AtScale came out of Yahoo. Okay. So at Yahoo, we had big data before big data was a thing. Uh, we had a, a mess of of all these different tools and different consumers who wanted to consume the data and uh, nobody could agree on what an, an, an impression was or what a click was. And so I needed a semantic layer and it didn't exist. So I had to go start a company to develop it. That's pretty cool. But wait a moment, are you saying that you're responsible for this Hadoop mess in the first place? So we were incubating Hadoop, but I was a customer of Hadoop. I wasn't in charge of it. Uh, but that was our first port, was a semantic layer on Hadoop. Right. And then we quickly saw that people were struggling with Hadoop, and these new cloud data platforms like BigQuery and Redshift and Snowflake uh, and Databricks were becoming more popular. So we, we Fortunately. Yes, and so you know that's most of our business now is in the cloud and on those data platforms. These are pretty interesting insights. Definitely that also brings me to another important question around the focus that's, you know, obviously we've been hearing a lot around AI uh, in 2023, and that started obviously back in November 2022. But what's the focus for Calibra and at scale in 2023 going forward, and how do you look this space moving? You want to go first, or should <laughs> no, I? You take it first. Ah, sorry. Um, 2023. Um, so, well, here's a, here's one. Obviously, you mentioned AI. So, uh, November of 2022. Yep. So about six, seven months ago. That's when, if you look at Google Trends, AI was flat for a long time, and then it boom skyrocketed up, just That's like right. Bitcoin, right? So, um, it really what happened is it 
democratized access to AI. Now everybody can do it, right? So obviously that's a topic on our minds. Yep. Um, it's also a topic on our customers' minds. And it's going to give a lot of new things happening. Like, hey, you have a Vertex database now. How do you catalog that? Or, yep. you know, when you put an AI system in production, how do you make sure that you have controls around it? Like AI governance. And this is all very recent. I think uh, Google only released all of their services two weeks ago. Uh, the European uh, regulation was being discussed just last week. So all very recent. AI, top of mind. Yep. Um, second, I would say, always is adoption. Uh, because in a data intelligence journey, adoption is always key. Yep. So we keep working on that uh, with our practices, how we implement with the customers, how we help them, but also with our features, like the data marketplace, for example. Yep. And then uh, the one that is a personal uh, top of mind for me is uh, data monetization. I see too many data strategies which don't have a data monetization component. Uh, and I see too many data people who are like, hey, business, come speak the language of data. And I'm like, no, no, no. You're a data person, you go speak the language of the business, money. So those are my three things. Good point. Yeah, Dave, what do you think? Well, so, you know, so I sat in on the session on Gartner Predicts. So they came out with their predictions in October of 2022. Yeah. So what's that, like six months ago or something? Yeah. And they one of their predictions was 5% of you, of, of employees will be using generative AI by uh, 2026. 5%. 5%. Oops. And then, of course, ChatGPT came out a month later, and it's like completely blew that out of the water, right? So uh, you're absolutely right that there's an inflection point yep. um, where, you know, traditionally ML and AI were very manual, very use case specific, and I think generative AI has really opened up the the doors to applications that affect more people yep. uh, than just the data scientists sitting in yeah, their yeah, queue. Definitely. So not just the new uh, Clippy. That's ex exactly, <laughs> exactly. Right. Oh, it is the new Clippy. Is, well, <laughs> some, some some of that will end up as a Clippy. Oh. Uh, well, I saw I saw uh, also another session. Uh, it was the uh, the BI tool Bake Off, and all the BI tools. It was Click, it was Tableau, and it was Power BI. They're all showing chat GPT integration. Um, so making it so it, you know they can create those visualizations through text. That's quite impressive, right? Yeah, and it's there. So uh, it's a little bit better than Clippy, but we'll see. Awesome, amazing insights there. Uh, quick question uh, for you, Stan, spe specifically around you know, semantic layer. We've been obviously talking a lot around it. So how do you see the relationship with Calibra and Semantic Layer? What's like the whole app there? And how do you see you know customers benefiting out of the Semantic Layer? Um, well, I always get a little bit of a, um, you know, somebody's pushing my button when the word semantics is used. So I want to <laughs> preface my answer with that. Yeah. And that's just because where, I, where we come from originally, right? That Semantics Lab, back then, the semantic web was a uh, was going to be the next big worldwide web kind of thing right so it was a lot of noise around it uh, but if you look at the semantic layer in an enterprise i think that's a very powerful construct and i see it as two pieces so you have uh, one piece is more in between people let's say for example let's say the three of us are each representing a silo in the business right. sales marketing engineering let's say right and now we're reporting on customer. Right. You know, how do we know that we're all meaning the same thing with customer? Exactly. And how do we know that we're counting them the same way, right? Very true. That's an example of the business layer, the glossary, ontology, taxonomy, call it whatever you want. Yeah. And then there's like a second part, which is more maybe the data dictionary. I'm just using simple words, right? Yeah. And that's more about, okay, how does this connect to like a customer, but okay, how does it get in the tables and the columns? How is it structured? How is it formatted? How can I access it? Yeah. And I think that's where, you know, if you look at a Colibra, we're really good at that people aspect. And then if you look at an ad scale, that's where it goes down to, okay, now you query this uh, yeah. via the semantic layer. Yeah, very good example there. What do you think about it? Yeah, you know, it's like, a, that's a great, a, it's actually, you did it better than I could, Stan, so I'm, I'm, kind, of, I'm kind of mad at you. Uh, I'll send that. you a check. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, we, we, 
we see a lot of customers in if we're in the same accounts uh, where uh, Calibra is really being used as that front door for users to find get access to data to find data and understand what's available um, and and it's really important for the semantic layer to be surfaced through Calibra so that you, we can connect those users to the and, and allow them to find the data that they're they're looking for and so it's a really it's a really complementary fit um, because we'll do that last mile of running the query, um, but you can't do that if users don't know, you know, what that semantic layer is or, or, or how to find it. Absolutely. So if I use that metaphor of shopping for data, mm -hmm. you come to our store, the data marketplace, you find your data assets. Now you need it delivered at your doorstep. That's the semantic layer and at scale doing that. I love it. And you know, I heard a rumor that maybe you built this integration yourself. Oh yeah, well yes. <laughs> now you you outed me. Yeah, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> uh, but uh, I learned a lot about Calibra because uh, me and my other co-founder Diane Wood, uh, we built the Calibra connector for AtScale. So uh, thank you. I have a, a great appreciation for your platform uh, and how well it's designed. Thank you very much. So those uh, amazing insights there, uh, that kind of also brings me to another interesting question that we've been hearing a lot uh, around at Gartner in just shifting of gears a bit here in terms of bringing in the data franchise, the data mesh, the data fabric. Kind of interested to learn more about what do you think around that, hub and spoke. So Dave, do you want to give it a yeah, so uh, our, I, I see our most successful customers are using a hub and spoke style of, of analytics and creating data products. And so you can't really, you know, we the pendulum has swung both ways. Before we started with central IT owned everything. That didn't work because the business was always upset and they would, were, weren't able to get what they needed. And then we swung the pendulum over to the business and they created crazy stuff that created chaos and, and, and destroyed trust in the data. I think that the hub and spoke is, is a little bit of best of both worlds. Governance and some control over the tooling and the standards, so if people are playing by the same rules, but still let the business who understands the business do the work, uh, but do the work within the confines of some, some structure that is gonna make it easier to govern and share across these different domains. What do you think, Stan, about that? Well, I uh, have to agree with uh, Dave. Yeah. Um, you have to empower the business with the tools and the instruments they need to make their business. Yep. Uh, what I like about the data mesh concept is, I mean, there's a lot of data architectures, right? Uh, snowflake schemas and data lakes and whatnots. <laughs> but the new thing that I find with the data mesh is that it brings a social component to it. It's not just the data architecture. Right. There's also a social component to it. So when I was le reading this, I'm like, yes, right? Because that's governance. Uh, you have a domain of data. You have ownership around that domain. Who is responsible for that? Yeah. And how can they operate independently to make their business? So we're big fans of it. Yeah. And honestly, for the first time, I think very technical audiences, Engineers are literally on the barricade saying, "How? Oh, we've been doing data mesh for years." Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's great. Finally, you're recognizing the value of governance. Thank you very much. Um, but we're fans of it, so I apply it internally as well. Um, so you know, we have data coming into our data lake. Uh, that's a raw data set gets registered in the catalog. Uh, then people can shop for it. So that's a self-service function to the business stakeholders. Yeah. Um, so yeah, big fans. Yeah, those are great use cases and uh, amazing examples shared. Thank you very much. Uh, one last question for uh, both of you in terms of uh, the things that we've been talking around and I've been listening a lot about a term which is FinOps uh, and a lot of enterprise organizations have already been, you know, kind of looking into it and see how they can, you know, reduce the cloud spend and what could be done in FinOps is kind of the, the, the thing that they're looking at. So, what are your thoughts around it? Well, um, it's an interesting thing because uh, what the cloud does, I mean, let's simplify it to storage and compute, right? What the cloud does is it says, okay, here, Mr. Business User, Mrs. Business User, you can now do this yourself. Right? You don't need this IT, you don't need this whatever. You don't need a data center, just use it. 
Um, and the funny thing is that this is now bringing a direct connection between that business stakeholder and the costs. Because if they write a query that is very costly to run, they're, end up, uh, they're ending up with the bill. Right? So they, they're much closer to the, uh, the cost itself, which is important, I think. Um, and then you'll start to see, because you know, pressures on costs are going to continue to mount, that will, that will continue. Um, so what this is going to do, actually, in my view, is it's going to make data management more important. Because if your data is well organized, there's less copies, there's a better structure, the queries are more efficient. So your costs for the cloud will go down by doing better data management, finally. Yeah, I love that. And uh, you know, it's we moved from CapEx, where you buy equipment and then you use it for as long as you can, and then and when it starts to you know, get too busy, you buy more, to OpEx, which is pay as you go. And that's changed the game. And I think people are, some of the people are still operating on the old CapEx model. Mm -hmm. And like you said, if somebody runs a query, it can now be tracked back to that, that person, that yep. business unit, in which case the business has to ask, what was the return on that, that, that investment, that cost? Yep. And so I think it's going to be, it's going to really drive a really good discipline of, of forcing companies and organizations to really um, uh, um, uh, provide a, a, a justification for why do I need that report once every five minutes? Yeah, exactly, and that's why... Why can't I have it once an hour? Because <laughs> the differences could be substantial. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So that's why I'm a big fan of these uh, data products. Because it brings, I mean, we're a software company, so we're used to product management, but it brings that product management thinking to data. And product management thinking means, what's the need, what's the value, what's the cost? And if those are not balanced, then why are you doing this? Yeah, yeah I, I think it's, there's going to be a lot more tools built around this space to help, to help companies manage it. But I think it's still, right now, it's a DIY kind of a process. And Wait a moment. Yeah. Are you DIYing a tool yourself again? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I am right now for that too, for FinOps. We have our own FinOps challenges, yeah, right? Uh, you know, we have our, as a, as a, as a customer of the cloud, uh, and as, as is Calibra, yep. uh, we use a lot of cloud resources to do our testing and platform certification. Same. Same. Yep. Okay. Yeah. This I, I can only see the space evolving very quickly, and that's what I hear from, obviously, the founders of Calibra uh, at scale. Uh, so looking forward to, obviously, seeing how the space kind of moves across. But uh, I'm pretty sure the audience joining us would love to learn more about it. They might have some questions for you. So if they want to reach out, Stan, where can they reach out to you? Uh, Stan at Calibra.com or uh, Stich Ries, that's maybe a bit hard to say on, on Twitter or, or LinkedIn. <laughs> Uh, I'll try to answer any question that comes in and I'm always trying to be helpful when it comes to data. Oh yes, I can validate that. I, I just reached out to Stan and he's out there for the community. Dave, where can people reach out to you? Okay, so it's Stan at Calibra.com. Stan at Calibra.com. <laughs> I'm Dave at AtScale.com. That's, hey. Benefit of being Benefit a founder. Benefit of being a founder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, LinkedIn, uh, 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 D. Mariani on Twitter, the, all, all the different handles, but any, would love to, love to chat with you. Awesome. Thank you very much for uh, doing this, and uh, I'm looking forward to definitely doing more of these with Calibra at scale on the Rabbit Show. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you.